Devotion Five Puzzle Shopping, sitting in for uh, Tom O'Brien, and we've got on the line Mastering Probability Steve Rose himself and uh, his newsletter. And I, this is uh, going to be very interesting because I'm sure that Steve has a lot of profound stuff to talk about right now about the markets. And Steve, how are you? I'm doing great, Basil. Yourself? I'm well, thank you. So uh, before so, we get into the markets, um, uh, I know that uh, you're a tennis player. I'm a golfer. You're, I'm sure you're a much better tennis player than I am a golfer, though. And uh, so uh, this this weekend, one of my favorite tournaments was on the TPC, kind of like the fifth major. But I also know, wasn't the Indian Wells tournament on for tennis? Is that kind of like a fifth major? Is that what the uh, yeah. tennis? You, you got me. You know, I just see it when I see it. I love playing. In fact, I even snuck out today to go and play for an hour. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, but I, I watch it when I watch it. I prefer it. Okay. playing okay. to actual watching, but I do watch, <laughs> yes. But the okay. Indian Wells have had some fantastic games lately, yes. Yeah, I know. I think Elkarez was, uh, you know, was you know Elkarez and Medvedev, when those guys play. I didn't get a chance to see it. Um, oh. And, I, and I, don't, I don't think it's, I think it's just a best of three sets out there, not a five setter or something yes, like that. Correct. But, uh, you know, it's great. It's great on. to That's watch those is. guys play. They're yeah. just amazing. Oh, the just tennis amazing. these days, the last year has been, uh, my kind of tennis, they, you know, chop and they, it's not just serving and backcourt. It's everything. Yeah. It's fabulous. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So to the markets and the, the, the question on everybody's mind, you sort of touched on this here is, ha and I thought we'd spend a little time on it today, is trying to answer the question, has the stock market topped? So let's get into it. Each of the daily. So what we have up here are eight different daily time frame cash index charts. So it covers it covers basically everything. So we've got the Dow in the upper left. Next to that is the S&P, the Nasdaq 100, Russell 2000. On the, uh, on the row below, we've got the semis, the transports, the Nasdaq composite, and New York Stock Exchange. So the answer is yes. Each of these daily stock index charts have confirmed topping patterns. So if we take a look at the Dow up here on the left, Basil, I've got it with the Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. If I take a look at the uh, uh, S&P, the same pattern. Now, Rhodes Mo Momentum Indicator top is telling us that the market is stretched to the upside, but being stretched doesn't mean it's top. The way that we get a signal that the market is top, I let the market communicate to us, and the way that it does that for me is generates either bullish or bearish reversal candles. At tops, we're looking for bearish reversal candles. We had a bearish engulfing candle in the Dow Jones. We had a bearish engulfing candle in the S&P 500, the same thing in the NDX. The Russell 2000 actually generated what I refer to as a TD9 count top. The semis, a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. The transports, a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. Price and gap down, so we got a big gap out there. A gap to the downside is a, for me is a bearish reversal candle. A gap to the upside, a bullish reversal candle. The Nasdaq Composite, bearish engulfing, Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. A New York Stock Exchange, a TD9 count top. So I can definitively say that each of these cash index charts has generated a topping pattern. So the next question should be, and the next question I like to ask is, where is support? So here again are the daily time frame charts, and I refer to the red horizontal lines that we're looking at as TD9 count breakout levels. So I'd mentioned as an example, if we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange in the lower right up here, this formed a TD9 count top. You'll see the number nine count out there. We have TD9 counts, whether it's tops or bottoms. Right now we're just focused on tops. It will then generate where price had broken out from. So it's a cool thing about the pattern is it help us it helps us to identify that there could be a top or bottom forming. But then what it also does, is it gives us this objective level of support. So in the case of the uh, Russell 2000, uh, what we've got out here is support would be at 2011.90 cents, and then in New York Stock Exchange be 17,603. So if we take a look at this is the New York Stock Exchange. So we're just going to blow that up uh, large. We can all take a look at that. And closing below a TD nine count breakout area would generate a change in trend. So this is taking a look at the New York Stock Exchange coming off of the October uh, 2023 uh, bottom out here. And this would tell us that we've got one price that we just simply need to watch. Because pulling back to support, folks, is uh, is really what the market's always doing. This is in a, in a bull market, uh, pullback should be testing support levels. And in a bear market, uh, uh, rallies should be testing resistance areas. So here I can definitively say if we see a close below 17.603.88, my preference would be two consecutive closes below that, then the New York Stock Exchange would generate a change in trend signal. 
Here's an example of New York Stock Exchange. If we go back to January 20th, 2022, which is where I've got my blue arrow, we can see that the New York Stock Exchange closed below that TD9 count breakout level. That gave us a change in trend signal. We had the second consecutive move below that. That was telling us we had a change in trend signal out there. Well, we can also see, now what I've done on this chart is I've put up the TD9 count breakdown resistance levels. So support are the red horizontal lines. Uh, and the green lines are the uh, resistance series out there. And what we can see here is even though price, when price broke through back on January 20th, all rallies found resistance at a prior TD9 count breakdown resistance level. We did have one day where price closed above it. This is back in the April time frame. This is why I use a two bar rule out there because one bar can just be one of those beautiful one hit wonder songs out there. And we want mm -hmm. confirmation. So what we can see is all the way down, any rallies found resistance at those breakout levels until we got into this October rally when price was able to break through this uh, 15,252 level out there. So that's how the TD9 count pattern works. It's an excellent time for folks that are listening in to test drive mastering probability comes with that 30 day money back guarantee because I do have a workshop that includes the, sp uh, the specifics about the TD nine count pattern. So great time for people to test drive mastering probability. Now the New York stock exchange, is not something you or I can trade. We don't have an ETF, but if we took a look at that original set of charts, we saw the Russell 2000, which all, which has a TD nine count top has been approaching its breakout level. So what you and I also know is that if we were to see a close on the Russell 2000, the cash index, for two consecutive sessions, close below 2011.90, that would generate a TD9 count change in trend signal. So the New York Stock Exchange, I say just watch that for the general market overall. But on the Russell 2000, that should be the first one that if we are in the beginning of a protracted retracement, uh, correction, whatever that might be, the Russell 2000 from a TD9 count breakout level probably gives us our first uh, signal out there. So watch 2011.90. The XAU. So something, you know, we, Tom writes a gold newsletter. We get calls all the time, right, about the GDX and the stocks with inside it. If we take a look at the XAU, so I'm just focused here, Brazil, on the indices. I've got drawn a couple of TD9 counts. We can see two tops because there was one that formed just a few days ago. And now I've got a line drawn to a TD9 count bottom. That was the last time that we had a significant bottom inside the XAU. So this is a pattern that is certainly worth paying attention to. If we take a look at a topping pattern, which formed out here in this little rectangular bar, this so a bottoming pattern out here. I don't know why I put topping up there. But if we take a look at a bottoming pattern out here, when something bottoms, all that it's really entitled to do is go test resistance. Can it break through resistance out there? And for me, one of the resistance levels that I use is the oscillator and change line. We can see that this TD9 count that formed back in the 2008 time frame, I guess, I, I, I'm not sure the date of this. No, it can't be 2008. This is recent. So within the past few months out here, price ran right into resistance at that green oscillator and change line out there. And then it finally broke through. So here's an example of using the TD9 count pattern. And uh, folks, uh, you, should, uh, you, should, you should consider testing driving mastering probability so Absolutely. that's what i see out there hey basil one thing maybe you can cover during your show so i show today that copper on a daily time frame negated a td9 count top and that suggests that we had higher so i just ask you how do you put that together what dr copper is doing and what i just shared with you on the cash that's indices a great question if, we'll deal with it hey say thank perfect. you a great great to interview you and uh thanks great basil work. appreciate thank it you very much take care Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the